The people of Egypt are rising up and saying, yeah, we'd like a little bit of that Social Security and those food stamps, please. How about some unemployment insurance during this recession? Hmm. People of Iran, same thing. All across Europe, people out in the streets. How about at least a job? Thank you very much. The governments say, no, we got this austerity thing. It helps the banksters out, the rich people, screws the poor people, and works out kind of well, you know? Matthew Melchior, a Warren T. Brooks journalism fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, thinks otherwise. He uh, wrote the true story of European austerity for the Competitive Enterprise Institute website, CEI.org. Cutting taxes and spending, he says, leads to renewed growth. Really? Mel Matthew, welcome. Thanks for having me, Tom. So give us your elevator speech. <laughs> Well, I'd like to address the, the first two things that, that you mentioned. One was that social protection in Europe uh, has gone down in the countries that austerity has actually been taking place. So there, there are two big myths. One is that austerity is actually taking place throughout Europe. And austerity defined as shrinking the public sector in terms of expenditures and taxes. That's only happened in four countries. Actually, that's a bad definition of austerity. Did you read the op or the article in the New York Times about, what, a month ago or so, about how anybody in Greece who has been unemployed for more than 12 months is no longer eligible for free national health care, and the story of this one physician who a woman came to him with a cancer that was bursting through her breast because she couldn't afford to see a doctor, and finally it just started oozing, and so she showed up, and he said, well, um, I've never me, seen uh, anything like this since back in the days in the 50s before we had a national health care system. Well, Tom, let me stop you there for a second, because I'm actually looking at the data for Greece right now, and uh, social protection spending, and it really hasn't budged much. So what you're well, looking I'm not at talking about isolated. spending, I'm talking about the availability of programs for people. Right, but when we talk about austerity, we're talking about the size. No, we're talking about cutting people off. Greece no, is cutting people off from, the from, from their so national health all, insurance program. Hold on, Tom, let me make a point here. Uh, when, when we talk about austerity, first of all, the private sector is already undergoing austerity in the sense that, there, that there's a recession and there's a lower demand for those goods. Now, what we need to have is the public sector share in the austerity that the private sector is already enduring, and that's defined. Why? That needs to be defined as a reduction in expenditures and taxation. So screw the, if, screw the people who are dependent upon government because the billionaires are having a rough time? I don't see no, them having a rough fact, time, by the in way. In fact, Tom, Tom, in fact, where that definition has taken place, the, the only four countries in Europe that have actually decreased spending and taxation, those only four countries, social protection spending has increased markedly in all of those countries. So, in fact, the cuts that they're finding are for things like business subsidies and um, other discretionary spending and programs, not in things that people necessarily defend, uh, depend on. And I think we might find a point of agreement in this, in the sense that a lot of the things that they're choosing to cut uh, have to do with corporate welfare. The, the area that concerns me most about your study, in, beyond the fact that you're saying that, that actually if you cut back on government spending during a recession, it's somehow going to magically help the, go you know, help the economy, well, which has no magic you know, worked no out magic. really, really well for Herbert it's Hoover, when, right? When, when the government has a smaller economic footprint, then there's more money in the pockets of businessmen, entrepreneurs. That's not necessarily true. That is yeah. absolutely not necessarily true. Now, it might be true if you want to, if you want to look at, at a state-by-state -state basis in the United States, but actually the experience of the last four years shows that it's not true here either. The states in the United States that have increased taxes and increased spending have seen their GDP go up. The states that have cut spending and or cut taxes have seen their GDP go down. It's been pretty much a red-blue divide. And if you look at Europe, you're saying, you, you did this, you said this report assessed economic growth for the six years following austerity's implementation in each European country. And then you give your methodology. Using a combination of GDP growth rates through the fourth quarter of 2012, as reported by Eurostat, and projected growth rates through 2017 from the IMF. So, in other words, you're taking imaginary numbers for the next five years and, and, and creating an imaginary reality here and then coming to tell us that austerity is not hurting these people. Well... First of all, let me address the point in the United States. So I, I'd be curious what you mean by, by spending and taxation and what uh, methodology you're going about to achieve those growth. Well, I'm not, so I'm not all, coming no, up with stop, magical stop. numbers hold, from hold 2017. On, hold on, hold on. So when, when you start decreasing spending, government spending is a part of GDP. So, of course, GDP is going to go down. What you need to look at is how GDP responds to that over the long term. And that's why in my study I used median 
six-year growth rates. So it cuts out the large swings, either volatile high or volatile low, and it comes in at an average. Now, in regard... It comes in at an average during periods now, of time that have not yet existed. But, see, the, the thing is that any projection you look at, whether it's on the right or the left or the middle, they're all But you can't make a statement about projections. the impact of austerity now, based of all, on projections into a fantasy do, future. The IMF does do vintage assessments, but they're usually not off by that much. And so you're correct to point out that I'm assessing... Uh, uh, you're speculating. The, no, no, I'm not necessarily all speculating, and, and especially with the four countries that, that I bring light of in, uh, in my study, which are Bulgaria, Ireland, Latvia, and Lithuania... They all began austerity uh, quite early, and in fact, those numbers are largely not based off of projections by the IMF. Uh, it's, it's largely countries that had steady state or... You're talking or about very, very state. small... I, I was in Latvia and Lithuania when the Soviet Union fell. I was there the year after. And, and it, these are countries that are the size, population-wise, of a large American city first of all. So, yeah, they will have relatively nimble economies, and they're still very, very poor countries. I mean, these, these are our former Soviet states. They're, they're still in a state of semi-shock. So, uh, any, any, you know, if you're going to use Latvia and Lithuania, and, you know, throw in Estonia for good measure, if you want, uh, as, as any kind of social indicator, or other similar small countries, Ireland, um, it, it just doesn't work. Why not look well, at, well, at, well, at, Tom, at Germany, Tom. which has done anti-austerity? Germany actually said, we're going to do a Kurzarbeit program, where the government is going to pay workers not to work during the recession, and will mu- we'll flow that money through the employers. We're asking the employers to cut workers back to 70% of normal uh, p- hours and yet pay them 95% of normal wages, and we, the government, will make up the difference. And they did that, and Germany did not go into a recession. The countries that did not do that went into a recession, and the countries like Italy and Spain and Greece that had to actually dial back government spending because the IM- or because the EU was saying, you can't have your government deficit go over 3% of GDP, which is crazy during a recession. Those countries, you know, they're, they're, as I pointed out, Greece has well, now cut hold, access hold, to their national health care system. Hold, hold, hold on a second. So uh, let, let me address the first point you made about countries that are small, like Lithuania, Lat, Lat, uh, Latvia, and Estonia. So um, when we're talking about uh, austerity, we need to look at the change, okay? So you're bringing in the fact that they're not quite developed, that unemployment is... On well, that's like saying we're going to base a study on, that projects on, America on, 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 a, on, a, on, on a large on, city let, in let, North Tom, Carolina. Can I, here? Tom, can I finish my thing? Yeah. Uh, so you, you have to look at the change. So austerity is an implementable policy. So, for example, if, if I go to the doctor and, you know, I, I weigh 300 pounds, and uh, he says, here, I'm going to prescribe you this new medicine... Uh, you know, and it's going to take 20 pounds off, and then it, it leaves me 20 pounds lighter at the end of the month. Well, I'm still 280, and that's still pretty bad. But does that mean that the medicine was bad? No. It, it means that I have other problems that I'm still working through, and that's the same with these developing Matthew, countries. right they, at this moment, right at this through. moment, and, hold on, Greece's, I, I, Greece's I, I, unemployment I rate is 26.8%, Spain is 269 under 25-year-olds out of work, 56% in Spain and 59% in Greece. You're saying that's good? No, Tom. In fact, the, the unemployment uh, that you're talking about is a tremendous tragedy, but it's not due to, to uh, spending going down at all. Those are structural problems. It's due problems. to austerity. No, no. It is in due fact, to conservative um, economic policy. In the countries that you're talking about in particular, so, for example, in Italy, uh, it's illegal to fire a worker for poor performance. And so a lot of uh, businessmen won't hire if they can't fire. In France, if, if, that, was, employer, if that was the case five or ten years ago, if you worker a job before the, you can lay him off. Then why didn't, it, why didn't it kill their economy a decade ago? Oh, it is. Been no, no, it wasn't. Yes, yes, Matthew yes. Melchior, uh, CEI.org is the website. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And you can check it out. His article is called uh, The True Story of European Austerity at CEI.org. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks for having me.